Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. I'm going to try something new. Uh, on both cameras, let me know if you like this. I've got the live and uh, low, what, low def, lower def, I guess, uh, the other live camera here. And I have the HD, hello over there, you guys. I've put the computer that I'm quoting from, for those that say I don't give sources, I'm dealing with how to give sources right now. Um, at least when I'm looking up, it's better than this. Let's see. I, I got a comment that said you should look into the camera more, and I understood that the person was looking at the low def, which are you guys, because I'm always looking into that camera. So this will hopefully solve that problem. Let me know if you like it, or if you don't, or if you don't care, because you know what? You shouldn't care. Just shut my ugly self off and listen. I'm much more right than I am pretty, I promise. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Ar maybe not. Saudi charity had accused of funding Al-Qaeda prior to 9-11 terrorist attacks, granted immunity. This was, uh, it's eye-opening to a lot of people, but we've already established at many, many uh, instances that Saudi Arabia, sorry, my people, you dropped. Saudi Arabia has been so involved in 9-11 and so many other nefarious things that they can't even release what they did. Most of the uh, redacted, most of the most of the parts of the 911 report that you're not allowed to read has to do with how Saudi Arabia plays a role in this. And uh, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna laugh at people that are new to this because it's too important to. If you're new to this, hear me out here. Saudi Arabia. And for better or for worse, is an ally of ours. Do you understand that they're an ally? They're a friend, in theory, anyway. And they played a role in this happening to us. Saudi Arabia is not the loyal friend that we are so often led to believe that they are. They're actually um, less than trustworthy in a lot of instances. They really are. And... For that reason, if for no other reason, I would really appreciate it if everyone paid attention to this. We're going to get on to all the juicier things later. But just pay attention to this, if you would. Noel Brinkenhoff from AllGov, a Saudi official caught up in an ongoing lawsuit over the September 11th attacks, has once again been removed as a defendant by a U.S. federal judge after the Saudi government requested his immunity. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? They, the good guys, as it were, the, the, the September 11th attacks were funded by a lot more people. Even, even if you buy the government line all the way, fine. We'll go into what Glenn Beck calls the safety tree. We all believe that it happened exactly the way the 911 report said it did. There's no, we agree. Any disagreements about the building that fell when it wasn't hit, Building 7, and no, we all agree. Even then, even then, those 19 people did not pull this off themselves. And they're zeroing in on some of the people that are and now they're going to be granted immunity. Now, why does that matter? Why, why, Sam, am I listening? You've been on the air for four minutes, Sam. Why am I listening to you? Why should I not shut you off right now? Why are you leading with this? I'll tell you why. Because do you know anybody that did time for something that they, they I mean, they, they really screwed up. They, they really did something wrong and they did some time in prison. Did, did, did they get immunity? Did, did, they get, did anybody know anybody that's really gotten hammered? Okay. Did they do something as bad as causing the terrorist attacks? Now, for those of you that don't buy the official 911 story, this is even more aggravating. Immunity. 
if for people that led to the 9-11 attacks, which killed, what, some 3,000 people, has destroyed the Fourth Amendment in the United States, has led us into uh, borderline tyranny, countless invasions, wounded soldiers, everything. And one of the people that caused it is going to get immunity. Not you, who gets the uh, low-level DUI. Not you, Mr. Pot Smoker. No, you're not going to get immunity. You're going you're gonna to get the book thrown at you. Uh, knock down the World Trade Center, or at least know of it and could have done something to prevent it and you get off you get immunity that's that's the american way abdul rahman al swalim a former president of two charities the saudi joint relief committee and the saudi red crescent society again this is all on all uh, all gov's website was accused in a 9-11 lawsuit and keep in mind that was in 01 this is 2015 of supporting Al-Qaeda before the terrorist attacks, he is also accused of appointing an Al-Qaeda figure as an SJRC director. The legal action against al Swalim is part of what is described as a vast, a vast multi-district lawsuit against hundreds of defendants who are claimed to have provided support for the 911 terrorist attacks, according to Courthouse News. And again, we're in the safety tree. That means that all of the 911 conspiracy theorists and all of the people that believe the government line all agree that a lot of people paid for this. You don't you don't have to be Republican or Democrat. You don't got to agree with me, you don't got to love me. It doesn't really matter. We all know that 19 people didn't pull this off off themselves and the government never said they did. It's very obvious that they were funded by a number of people. Why would they get immunity? Could it be because there's some very big names in American leadership that could also be tied to this in some way? Uh, I don't know. If you think I'm crazy, that I'm willing to hear you out. I, I, won't, I won't cuss at you. It's, it's a promise that you almost never get from me. I won't cuss at you. Do you tell me why he got immunity? I am all ears. Otherwise, I'm sorry, it looks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. Quack, quack. It, to me, this seems like a duck. Alice Swalim got himself removed from the civil case in 2010 when a federal judge wondered why he would do this, tossed the complaint out altogether. But on appeal, the litigation was restored by the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which put Al Swalim back as a defendant. So he again asked to be removed as did the Saudi royal family. Back to that friend or friend of yours that might have. I mean, let's say he really did something wrong and they got busted, him or her. Wouldn't want to offend the feminists. Him or her. Okay. Did they get off? Did they do anything as bad as being tied to 9-11? Because the Saudi royal family, they get off. Don't. It's right in front of you. Allgov.org. It's, it's a matter of public record. The Saudi royal family, which rules Saudi Arabia, saying al Swalim's position as head of charities entitled him to diplomatic immunity due to the charities being agencies of the Saudi government. Charities, mind you. This is like a, a Nazi death camp being called a charity. It's like the non-governmental organizations that are, of course, nothing but governmental. It's, uh, this is a joke. This is, this is a terrible, this is like the devil's favorite joke. I, right here, U.S. District Judge George Daniels granted Al Swally motion last week, ruling that he was entitled to immunity. He's entitled to a lynching. This doesn't make any sense. Again, not really, don't really hurt the man. Uh, Sam told me to lynch him. No, Sam's telling you to make sure he's never in office again. Here, the Saudi government, through its ambassador, has requested that his court grant common law sovereign immunity to al Swalim, and was declared that all alleged actions uh, were taken by al Swalim in his official capacity as head of the SRC and SJRC, Daniels wrote. 
The conclusory allegations in the complaint do not strip Al-Swahim of conduct-based immunity for actions. In other words, blah, 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 he's going to walk. One of the people that can really answer some questions here, immunity. And if that doesn't make you mad, maybe you don't care about the 9-11, it doesn't matter. Think about your, your loved one that maybe got what they had coming to them. Well, how much more would the people here have what's coming to them? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not a perfect person. I'm as, I'm as far removed from a perfect person as you can possibly get. I've done terrible things. I have. I've, I've done things that probably should never have been done. I have never done anything knowingly, willingly, that led to the death of 3,000 people and then gotten immunity for it. Um, friends, this is a man invades a home to steal Confederate flag, a tax owner, according to police. I'm dead serious, uh, as it's alluded to in the description, and I, I actually think I said that it happened here, and it may not have. You break into someone's house to steal their Confederate flag, and they shoot you? They are in the right. Um, I, I'm part Sicilian, and, uh, of course, Sicily has ties to Italy and the, the Nazis destroyed Italy. Does that mean I should break into your house if you have a Nazi flag and I'm justified in stealing it? No, you would probably say I'm not. Well, if an Italian or Sicilian in my case, I'm a mutt. I've got lots of things in me. Um, uh, that, that'll be cut out and used against me. God only knows what they'll say then. He said he had all kinds of things in him. <laughs> He's Caitlyn Jenner. I, I'm kidding, but I'm, I, mean, I, just, I don't want to be grim all the time. Have a sense of humor. I'll get to the facts. What I'm saying is, if I can't do it as an Italian or Sicilian, then why? Because you happen to be of a race that is offended by the Confederate flag. Would it be okay for you to do it? People do have a sovereign right to own that, which pisses you off. It's just, it is. Deal with it. Kit Daniels Infowars. Kit Daniels has been on a uh, extreme uh, high lately in terms of uh, acknowledgement for his work. And that's awesome to hear, by the way. Kit Daniels, way to go. A Racine, Wisconsin man invaded a woman's home to steal her Confederate flag and assaulted her in the process, according to police. I wish should have shot him dead. Or at least shot him injured. How's that? We're not going to wish anyone dead. Although the suspect, 37-year-old Tajan Boatner, faces multiple charges, including criminal trespassing and misdemeanor battery, the presiding judge set his bail at $100 over the recent incident spurred by a Confederate flag hanging in the window. And again, it all ties together, uh, and not directly, not like lunatics would say, but... The Saudi government and people in Saudi charities don't get prosecuted for causing the death of 3,000 people and destroying the Fourth Amendment for an entire nation. That would be us. But now, just because you are in a, a non-privileged class, I'm not even going to get into it, then you get off at $100 bail. What did your loved one do that might have messed up? We all have a loved one that messed up. Some of us may have messed up ourselves. Uh, no, I don't have a felony, by the way. Little die of dumb stuff, like a criminal trespassing 30 years ago. I don't know, whatever it was. But um, <laughs> the these people could just get off. All you got to do is be non-white. And and I, am I making this a racial issue? No. No. I'm trying to say that they are using race to divide us and they're allowing this to go on to create further divisions among us. And this is one way that you can do it. Listen to this. Boner reportedly asked the woman to remove the flag after spotting it in her kitchen window and started calling her names even though she agreed to remove the flag to a less visible bathroom window. She should have told him to go to hell. 
The woman told him to leave her alone, but he walked up to her porch, opened the doorway to her home, and pushed her down on the floor to the kitchen and Racine, the Racine company I reported. He then went into the home, walked into the bathroom, and took the flag out of the window. And the police said he, they arrested him. He refused to cooperate and had to be forcefully pushed into the wagon. So he gets off on $100 bail for resisting arrest, assault, breaking and entering, and stealing someone's solvent property. And yet he's out on a $100. If I was her, I would paint every shingle on my damn house as a Confederate flag, and I would live in that house with my pistol on my lap. Uh, NBCnews.com. This is not good news. And before I get into uh, talking about Jimmy Carter, I know he was a crappy president. I, I, I know. But he was a very good person. Um, again, is he, is he tied into the uh, Illuminati in terms of his uh, 32nd degree uh, masonry? Yes. And uh, that's, that's obviously less than the good Christian way, as it were. But Jimmy Carter, at least in terms of uh, politicians and leaders, is a good man. He's a very, very good man. Some people will argue that he was too good of a man to even have been president. And uh, unfortunately, in some ways, maybe that was true. But this, this sucks. Even though he destroyed our economy, this sucks. Former President Jimmy Carter has advanced cancer. Again, and if some of the economy he did inherit from the uh, the whole mess that was the 70s and Watergate and Ford and all that, but still, he didn't do much to help us out either, and Reagan did it in four years. Carter did not. It, it, but again, this is the same guy that started Habitat for Humanity, which is an excellent organization. So, again, I'm, this, this, is, this is very, very sad, and I wish him the best. Former President Jimmy Carter says he has cancer that has spread, although it's not yet clear what kind of cancer he's had. And again, we know he's had it before. Carter 90 had a mass removed from his liver on August 3rd. Very, very sad. Uh, uh, liver cancer killed my dad. And it's interesting. I don't know that Jimmy Carter is a heavy drinker. I'm about 99.99999% sure that you can say no, the Christian Jimmy Carter is not. Uh, neither was my dad. So what are they putting in the food? And that's an, we've done other articles on that, but just, just to put it out there. Uh, recently, liver surgery revealed that I have cancer that is now in other parts of my body. I will be rearranging my schedule as necessary so that I can undergo treatment by physicians at Emory Healthcare. A more complete public statement will be made when facts are known, and possibly next week, Carter said in a statement. Well, keep an eye on Emory Healthcare because if they can nurse the 90-year-old cancer-stricken Carter into remission, then God forbid if any of you ever listening to this need a good health care, then you'll know. Uh, James Earl Carter Jr. was the 39th president of the U.S. from 77 to 81. He's kept active despite his age, and he really has. Working with groups such as Habitat for Humanity, winning the Nobel Peace Prize in 2002, and unlike Obama, kind of earning it, and founding the nonprofit Carter Center in his home in the state of Georgia. Let me get, uh, this is why you tune in, I'm going to give you a piece of commentary and some facts you might not have known. I want to say it was in the 90s. It may have been early 2000s, but I am almost certain it was the late 90s. When we had a standoff. Uh, with North Korea that was tied into some other uh, Soviet interests or, or post-Soviet interests, I should say. Russian interests, Baltic interests, and basically it looked like nuclear war was really, really close. And it was Jimmy Carter's phone call that brought it to a close. And everybody went to the bargaining table instead of the red button. So before we trash Carter for the the failure unfortunately that was much of his presidency and I'm a libertarian so you know why I wasn't crazy about him I think he was prior to Obama the worst president of my lifetime but unlike Obama I think Carter's a good man Carter's family has a history of pancreatic cancer. His father, both his sisters and his brother died of pancreatic cancer as well as his mother having it 
In 07, Nick Carter told the New York Times that he had CT scans twice a year. So he's been being checked twice a year and he still has cancer. Now, I didn't know this. It's considered level four any time that it spreads. I thought it was level four once it spread to the point that you were going to die. Uh, they do that because usually at level four, you're considered uh, about dead. But it is not, not as grim as I thought it was when I heard level four. But again, there's no level five, so it's not good news. Um, they said that if they can't cure him, they'll be looking at palliative care. Anytime you hear palliative care, that means they've given up on you and they just want to make sure that you're comfy. So, uh, come on, let's not be inhuman. Let's say a prayer for Jimmy Carter tonight when we go to bed because uh, if it was you laying there at 90 years old with pancreatic cancer, you'd be terrified. And like I said, he wasn't a great president, but he was a pretty good human being is a pretty good human being. I'm jinxing him already. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I beat again. She got three more stories for you, including the dumdy of the day. But I want to give a shout out to Sticker Junkie, who made these awesome Passing Time stickers. Oh, low def can see them now. You want stickers that look like that? You, you, you want your stickers, your message to get out there? What's your favorite candidate? Go ahead and promote it with Sticker Junkie. You'll get the best stickers that you can possibly imagine. Design them yourself. I, I did that in Photoshop. That was our logo. Is our logo. And uh, you know what? Bam. Sticker Junkie sent them back. And they were amazing looking. So make sure you uh, get a hold of David Lake. And if you let them know at Sticker Junkie that you heard about it from the correct views, David Lake's going to set you up with a special deal. And uh, you're going to get a little bit better than everybody else. Because you listen to TCV. Friends, the next story brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, M A C L A U G H L I N. Walmart store declared public nuisance by mayor of Indiana City. Make sure you look up Mike McLaughlin's work. Amazing writer. This was in Cleveland.com, written by Cliff Pinkard. And I, who do not take back the fact that I do not shop there unless it's another emergency. I do not think you should shop there. I do not think they are good for the country. I think they're bad for the country. I think their dealings are horrible. Their leaders are horrible. Their pay is horrible. And I hate the store. Are we clear? Good, because I'm sticking up for Walmart. And I'll tell you why in a minute. This I feel like I've sold my soul to the devil. Not really. It's, it's, in this instance... If you don't side with Walmart, then you can't truly be of a freedom-oriented mindset. And I'll explain why in a minute. God, this hurts to say. A series of incidents at a Walmart store in Beach Grove, Indiana, some of them high profile, have resulted in the city's mayor declaring it a public nuisance. Yay, Walmart's going down. No, hold on. Beach Grove mayor... Dennis Buckley, who I really, really want to side with here and can't, took the action after 42-year-old Jalance Monroe's samples tried to steal from the store last Thursday, according to the Indianapolis Star. Police tell the star that samples was caught by security, but then waved his gun at employees. He ran to a nearby restaurant and shot himself in the head. We're better than that. Our community is better than that. And I don't want to get a phone call every day saying that somebody pulled a gun at Walmart and did something out of line. And then he goes on to other instances that have happened there involving guns and violence or whatever. And I say to hell with you, Mayor, Walmart's innocent. Here's why. This is the mindset that says, well, there was a fight in a bar and somebody got shot. So let's shut the bar down. No, let's send the guilty party to prison for killing somebody and leave the bar open because the bar owner did nothing wrong. And as a lifetime musician, I can promise you this happens. Um, this is the, uh, the mindset that says, well, you know, the, the marijuana dispensary has been voted by the states. But some idiot decided to feed marijuana to his newborn, then the marijuana died. So we need, when the baby died, so we need to shut down the marijuana dispensary. No, we need to put the parent in prison. This is blaming Walmart for the actions of things that are beyond Walmart's responsibility. 
and the entire community does not need to lose its store because certain animals within the city do not know how to act like human beings. Having said that, I hate Walmart. Uh, friends, four economic myths that perpetuate the Euro crisis. And if you want to know why I hate Walmart, look up Correct Views Walmart. You've got lots of listening. The Greeks and Europe need monetary freedom. Now, friends, I'm not going to read the intro here. It's Patrick Barron, Mises.org, but I will get to the four myths. And this matters to you if you ever hope to uh, understand why you are in the economic situation that you are in. If you want to know the import importance of investing and how to invest and whether or not you should go to gold, which you should, stay out of banks, which you should. Why? Well, these are important to hear then. The euro is too strong a currency for Greece. And instead, the statement is usually accompanied by a reference to Greek productivity uh, being lower than that of the northern tier EU countries. The logic, such as it is, states that the euro is not a suitable currency for countries with vastly different levels of productivity. And it's always followed by recommendations that prove otherwise. Well, uh, that prove the point. But the point, I should say, is when you dig a little bit otherwise it says uh there's a semester's worth of economic fallacies embedded in the chain of logic a currency is an indirect medium of exchange two countries with different levels of productivity can use the same medium of exchange just as two individuals can what does that mean it says you may pay the kid next door to mow your lawn with dollars that you earned in a highly skilled and highly compensated profession. Yet you both use dollars. There is no reason that the Greeks and the Germans cannot use the same currency. In the age of gold, back when there was a gold standard, national currencies were defined by their exchange rates to gold and were redeemable in specie. Therefore, in effect, all countries were using the same currency, gold. That's another reason it's good to back your currency in gold, too. And I'm not going to spend long on this before we get to the dumb deal of the day, I promise. Debasing the currency will help the Greeks export their way to recovery. That's not going to happen. It says... Uh, We've got what's called the cantillonian effect, which tells us that the early receivers of the newly printed money will benefit by their ability to purchase resources at existing prices. The losers are those furthest removed from the initial increase. And who is that? That would be the average pensioner. So, no, that's only going to make the poor much poorer. Three, instituting one's own currency will enable the government to avoid unpopular spending cuts. What they're saying is that uh, debasing the currency is a way to avoid the dreaded austerity monster. That means uh, less welfare, less health care, less assistance for people that need it. Governments would have the people believe that there are sufficient real resources to redistribute from the wealthy to alleviate all poverty. And it's assumed that the wealthy have nefariously confiscated the people's wealth and redistributing it along socialist lines will result in plenty for all. It's the Bernie Sanders way. The socialist plenty for all slogan has been around for a long time and has never proved its worth in alleviating poverty. Lastly, a currency must be backed by political power with taxing authority. And that's the... Uh, that's the common belief that is, uh, I, would, I would argue, most firmly rooted in nothing. Milton Friedman has been quoted as saying years ago in reference to the formation of the European monetary system, which we are now seeing to be a disaster, just ask Greece, that a monetary union needed a fiscal union. Italy's finance minister, Pierre Carlo Pardon, was quoted in the Financial Times of London in July. 2015 is saying that the only way to defend the euro was to move straight forwards political union. Both men refer to a fiat currency that would be money imposed by the state and backed by nothing except the legal tender laws. In other words, your money is worth nothing. That's why you can't get richer no matter how much of it you get. Real money, sound money, unless you get an exuberant amount. Real money, sound money is a commodity that has been forced on by the market. 
and is the most useful intermediate means of exchange. Sound money rises out of the market processes. In other words, you don't need the government to back gold in order for you to know in the long run that gold is worth something. You don't need the government to tell you that a steak is worth more than a piece of bologna, to put it into other terms. Filet mignon, worth more than steak. You, you see where this is going. Those are four myths. And for those of you that have followed the crash of the European Union, um, you see why I went there, and it simply needed to be said. For those of you that say, I really don't give a damn, give me the dumdy of the day, fair enough, here we go. Yes, the dumdy of the day. Yale professor. Students leaving campus over the racist word master. What the hell? Now, <laughs> how many of you know that um, the word master in college does not mean that? The slave and master, that's not what that means. If I say that I have mastered keyboarding, I haven't, but I am working on it. Close. I'm kidding. Mastered keyboards, then... Does that mean I am a racist towards my keyboard? No. If I say that people's porn history involves searching the word master, does that mean that the person searching said porn was a racist? No. That would be another use of the word master. Well, I love Mikhail Thalen. As he writes, he always finds me some of the best dumdies that I've ever seen. Students at Yale University, according to Mikhail Thalen, who is completely right, have reportedly left campus due to their school's use of the word master. A racist term, according to Professor Stephen Davis, who gets the dumdy of the day award, the dumbass of the lifetime award, that is, isn't it the job of a teacher, particularly a professor, to teach the proper use of words, right? We're always told that nigga does not mean what nigger means. And yet I'm racist for hating both words. So maybe I'm wrong here. But aren't you supposed to be able to differentiate nuances? Davis, whose current title is a master of Pearson College, a master of idiocy, officially called for a ban of the word Friday due to the racial and gendered weight it carries. Only if you're a professor that doesn't know how to properly use the Queen's English Common law does not mean um, it's common among all people. It refers to a commonality. In other words, you would have to know how to use the word common to know what that meant. Master has nothing to do with race here. Cuckoo! I have found the title of the office that I hold, and he shouldn't hold it at all. Maybe, maybe that's the solution, to make sure that he doesn't hold this office any longer. I have found that the title of the office that I hold deeply problematic given the racial and gendered weight that it carries, Davis said. I think there should be no context in our society or in our university in which an African American student, professor or staff member, or any person for that matter, should be asked to call anyone master. And there should be no context where male gendered titles should be normalized as markers of authority. This has to be the single stupidest professor currently teaching in the nation today. And what do I mean by stupid? I mean it in as the exact definition of stupid. The inability to properly apply knowledge. As explained by the Daily Caller, the term has long been used by Yale to describe leaders in the university's 12 residential colleges. 
For those of you that don't know, Yale organizes its undergraduate students into 12 different residential colleges, which are a core feature of daily life at the school, the Daily Caller's Blake Neff writes. Besides having their own dormitories, each residential college has a separate dining facility and library and can organize its own special events. Additionally, each college has a master, typically drawn by the school's faculty, who lives in a special house allotted to them on campus. In other words, they have to keep track of everything that just went on in that paragraph that I read you. Nothing to do with blacks. Nothing to do with whites. You can be a black master. I promise you, there are black masters that are masters over white people and has nothing to do with race whatsoever. Friends, that, that it ranks right up there with Seattle wanting to ban the term brown bag for lunches. It's the height of stupidity and uh, it's a distraction from things that really matter. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off for The Media Speaks. Do me a favor, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself at TheMediaSpeaks.com. Every penny you give to me at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com, that goes towards a better show. Can you donate to the show? Can you help us out? Because if you can't, I'm going to put it back into the show. I'm trying to get graphics back here on this TV, but for some reason, the new Windows isn't reading the cords, which I, I did buy, but it did me absolutely no good. But for those of you that donated, here they are. Uh, I'm still working on it. I'm going, the halogen lights, the computers, all that costs money. It takes hours to research this. Um, behind the scenes, Queen, say hello, Christelle, so they know that you're real. Hello. Uh, for those of you that didn't pick it up on the unidir unidirectional, I'm not talking to myself. Hello. Maybe I am talking to myself. But every penny you give helps me and my imaginary friend, who is also speaking, do a better show. Good night, friends. God bless, and thanks for tuning in.